Today we're going to pour some molten metal into wood grain. I reclaimed some large pine beams from an old brick and beam building here in Boston Seaport District. With a little help from my buddy Christian Dunbar, who's also a furniture designer, we resawed the beam and then ran it through the planer and joiner to clean it up into slabs. This slab weighs about 80 pounds and wasn't the easiest thing to move around. In the past, I had filled up cracks like this with a clear countertop resin, but this time I wanted to take things to the next level. In order to conserve metal and also to keep the molten metal from running all the way through, I filled up the cracks partially with green sand. This is a sand used for casting, for making jewelry and stuff like that. I bought an alloy that's a mix of tin and bismuth. I got it from a company called Purity Alloys and I'll put a link to them in the description box below. This is a lead-free alloy that has a melting point of around 280 degrees Fahrenheit, which allowed me to melt it in a very basic melting pot that I bought off of Amazon. I poured the molten metal right into the cracks. Now this is a little bit tricky. One, because the, the molten metal has a weird viscosity and also because the melting pot isn't the easiest device to pour from. For future projects, I might try to make some sort of funnel or device that helps steer the molten metal into the cracks. Once the metal had cooled, I was able to chip away the little puddles of molten metal with a knife. Because the melting temperature of this metal is so low, there was minimal burning to the surface of the wood. I used my belt sander to sand the metal flush to the surface of the wood. Now this metal is relatively soft, so this wasn't hard to do, but in some of the thinner cracks, the aggressive nature of the belt sander actually pulled little pieces of the metal out of the cracks. So the metal really only stuck where the cracks were deep and there's a significant amount of metal in there. Sanding the metal creates a lot of metallic dust, which can be ground into the surface of the wood. So it's important to keep removing the dust from the surface so you don't get a lot of discoloration. This soft metal also gums up the belt on the belt sander pretty quickly, so I went through about three belts to do this whole top. I switched to an orbital sander to get a smoother surface on the slab, but what I noticed was the metal had this little pattern of the orbital movement that I didn't, wasn't too wild about. So I switched to hand sanding so that I could get the streaks in the metal to align with the wood grain. I spent a bit of time hand sanding the slab because I wanted to sand the wood part separately from the wood and metal part to try to remove as much discoloration as possible. Now that everything was nice and smooth, I sealed the whole slab with a couple coats of Minwax Wipe-On Poly. Some of the metal popped out of the shallower cracks during the sanding process but you could always fill these in with a clear casting resin. I really like this project. For some reason it reminds me of a beam that Wolverine scratched and then the Terminator from Terminator 2 then came in and filled in. I welded legs for this slab so that I could turn it into a coffee table. This was actually a lot easier than I thought it would be and I made a video of that as well. You can find that at the end of this video or in the link in the description box below. For more detailed instructions, check out my website, and if you want to see what I'm working on next, be sure to follow me on Instagram. Here's a couple other videos that involve slabs and metal bases, and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks, bye.